And then I was going to ask you a personal question right now, Eddie, you yeah. know, because I'm here to protect drivers, you know, um, how do you feel like about, you know, cause I could block your face out and I could actually block out, uh, your, I could deepen your voice. I could lighten your voice. I could yeah. say, you know, or, or do you feel like, uh, you know, this is the truth that you want to tell, because the last thing I want to do is I would hate for yellow to be like, Eddie, we saw you on this mother truckers <laughs> channel. You know what I mean? So at the end of it, I mean, I want to protect you too. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, how, what do you want to do? Let me know because I, you know, I want to protect you. I don't want, I don't want you getting a phone call. The bottom line is, listen, this is America. We have freedom of speech, freedom of press. And I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't have any in, deep inside trader information. I'm a driver. I'm just letting you know what's going on with the company. And, you know, it's all from, it's all from my point of view. What I'm seeing, I have no insider information. It's just what I'm seeing. And the memos that I that have been made public, you know, I, I'm just re reiterating that information to you and giving you some clarity. That's it, my brother. That's it. So hey, you don't that, have to I appreciate my that. face, change my voice, nothing. You know, I'm the steward of my terminal and this is how I am. You know, when we have meetings, I'm very outspoken. You know, I, I, I take it to my terminal manager and, you know, I stand up for the workers' rights and that's it. My rights, the workers' rights and just try to make sure they honor the contractual, you know, agreement. What's going on, brother? How you doing? How you doing? Good, good, good. Yeah, sorry for chasing you down today. No problem, man. No problem. No problem. You know, uh, you know, we're here just to, man, talk some facts and some truth. You know, definitely not here to spread rumors, not here to get anyone in trouble about things. Because when you watch every single video there is to watch, Eddie, it's almost like, People are just making up stuff as they go. Am I right? <laughs> that is true. That is true. You know, uh, can you tell us how many uh, years experience uh, do you have? And, you know, I know from the email you said that uh, you were a union. Is it a steward? Is that correct? Yeah, I'm a shop steward at uh, Boynton Beach, local uh, 769, terminal 757. Uh, I have uh, a combined uh, about 11 years total, you know, trucking experience and uh i have seven years at that terminal in boynton beach man and you know what is the role of a person that is a shop steward uh, like wh what what do you guys do what do you represent for that terminal uh it's basically someone that is uh you say uh it's a union delegate so if uh employee has an issue with, with with some violation of his contractual rights he'll come to me and ask me if they have a grievance to file i'll advise them I'll get in, in contact with the uh, business agent. Um, his name is uh, David Schillinger at the local there in Miami. And uh, we'll go from there and just help him out to get things resolved. But that's yeah, so, pretty much the job of a steward. You know, so 100%, you're the right guy to talk to today. You know, um, this, this uh, article that I've gotten over 100, uh, Yellow Wire C, Holland, I mean, I mean, at Penn, I mean, all all y'all been sending me this link. You know, Freight Waves has uh, been very popular lately, <laughs> throwing out these articles, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about already. You know, it says yellow is seizing regular operations on Friday, right? And the word is regular operations on Friday. And, you know, a memo went out and said that they were laying off some people. And so, you know, can you tell us some of the truth? I mean, is this article right? Uh, uh, are they shutting down regular operations? What are you hearing from your side as a representative? Well, as some some operations have been shut down. What I can tell you, there is no terminal in Florida that has been shut down. They laid off they laid off some um, management staff at my terminal, um, the Miami terminal, and also Orlando. Um, I, I didn't get any information on on the uh, the Jacksonville terminal, but. Um, as well as Tampa, they laid off two drivers and also some management. So, you know, they, they've done some layoffs, but no terminal in Florida has been shut down. You know, no, that's good to hear. So everybody, all you mother truckers out there, you know, just know that, uh, hey, no terminal out here in uh, Florida is completely shut down. You know, you're hearing stuff across the nation and there are terminals across the nation that were being shut down. And I remember when we were talking on the phone and just uh, texting back and forth, uh, you actually said you weren't surprised because was there some scheduled shutdowns of terminals already that we can tell uh, people out there in the world? 
Yeah, there were there with one yellow. Um, they wanted to implement one yellow. They started on West Coast sometime last year, I believe, and there was no kickback or no pushback, rather, from the union because they had written language in their contract to you know to 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 let it go through. So it went through quite quite okay, no problems, no problems as far as contractual. But they had hiccups with how the operation flowed. And they adjusted as they, you know, they went. They learned from that, and now they could implement that in, you know, in, in the eastern side, which is, I believe, our side here accounts for eighty percent of the whole yellow YRC yellow, you know, merger. So now they got over to here, and it's just it, it's violating the contract on many different levels. A lot of road drivers would some would lose their jobs, some would be forced to work the dock. And all Sean O'Brien was saying, hey, go ahead and just uh, open the contract and make it whole for these guys that are going to be violated. That's all. That's a, that's all it is. And Yellow doesn't seem to want to do that at all. Wow. You know, um, you know, with the memo that was sent out today, you know, I'll read a couple pieces of this. And I know you read this yourself. Right. It said, as we explained in yesterday's communication, TNFINC and the IBT have been working hard to help find solution to fix Yellow's financial mess and to help secure financing to enable it to continue its operation. While we are continuing to do so, we have no good news to report, and the likelihood that Yellow will survive is increasingly bleak. Uh, so at the end of this, I'm reading, it says, we recommend that all Yellow employees who have personal belongings and tools at the terminal should take them home today. So this memo is kind of scaring people a little bit, right, Eddie? Uh, pretty much the, the, the team, uh, the team sure leader and commander is saying, hey, we don't know how this is really going. And take all your things home today. I mean, what what are you thinking about when you read something like this? It's it's very scary, you know. It's very scary, but the reality is, um, based you know, to my knowledge, they have not laid off not one road driver nationwide, road driver, line haul driver. So they have a plan. Uh, in in Miami yesterday, they they said they were going to lay off sixty, and then. The next thing I heard, they canceled it. And, you know, I, I, I just got off the phone with, with uh, the steward from Miami, line hall steward, Nash, good guy. And he said, hey, they're calling back a lot of these guys. So they have a plan. They, they have a plan. But as far as Sean O'Brien, you know, saying what he's saying in, in that memo, it's just showing that he's not 100% sure. So he had to give us, you know, ample amount of notice that we could situate ourselves for, you know, for whatever may happen. That, that's, gotcha. what I'm, that's what I'm getting from that. No, I hear you. And for the people that don't understand trucking that might watch this, you know, this show, you know, when you say line haul driver, for the people that don't understand how local LTL works, uh, what's the difference between the people that are getting a let go and line haul drivers for the American people out there? Line haul drivers are the, the drivers that are just road drivers that drive the double trailers. And they go, they don't do any city drive, pick up and delivery. They just run from, say, Miami. They make a stop in uh, Boynton. They'll run from uh, Boynton all the way to Jacksonville and uh, dr uh, drop and hook there and turn or um, go into sleeper mood, go to a hotel because they run day cabs. And they also have line hall sleeper teams that run from ja Jackson, Mississippi, all the way to Boynton and uh, Orlando and all over. So that's that's what they are. No, I hear you. You know, at the end of this, you know, I pray for you guys, man. You know, it's it's one of those things where it irritates me a little bit that people are just like, oh, it's a sinking ship. But I mean, y'all put in work, invested your time, put in time and money and pensions. I mean, you know, it's sad to see this happen. And I've been keeping as much update as I can every single day because I know how much this is affecting your guys' lives. You know, what would you like the American people to know at the end of the day uh, just about what you guys are going through and uh, what, what you're hoping for at, at the end of this? This is, you know, it's very nerve wracking to know that you put in all the time and especially for the, 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 the senior drivers that's been there 20, 30 years and they've given back and their retirements are hit to the core because they still contribute to the pension, but they just contribute 25%. That's nothing. So 
the, the, you know, a lot of the newer guys, like I would consider myself a newer guy and the guys that, you know, from, from one year to, 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 you know, where I'm at, we've been getting screwed from the jump. So even though I have seven years, I have to work four years to get one year of pension. So think about it. I'm getting screwed from the jump, but we're all hardworking teamsters. We want our jobs. We want to keep working. You know, obviously, Daryl Hawkins and the management team, they have something planned. And based on the memo that, you know, Sean O'Brien released yesterday, it shows that they don't want to work with the Teamsters. They're not trying to save a lot of jobs. They're just trying to implement one yellow and push it through. And again, I, I just want to stress it. I don't know how much I can stress it. You know, I don't speak for the union, but I, I have an understanding of what's going on. The union never wanted to stop one yellow. The union is just looking out for the contractual rights of all Teamsters. So if it violates our contractual rights, they are there, they are there to protect us and make sure we get the best deal possible. That that is it. You know, that is it. And and they want to work with the company, but the company has other plans and want to implement, you know, one yellow their way. And and, and that and, and that's it. So you know, just uh, just a lot, lot of misinformation, but I just want the people to know that we're hardworking teamsters, hardworking union workers. We, we want to modernize and, and grow with the company, but the company, you know, has other plans you know, with or without us, it seems. You know, but I appreciate you. You know, I I emotionally would feel so upset. And the fact that you're really not bashing any side, you're just giving people information right now. Well, I give you props for that, brother. <laughs> Just, you know, to, 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 to be real, I would, a lot of this that's going on, I would most, more so blame management, 100%. And, and upper management, because, you know, they knew, they knew that it was coming out of crunch time. They knew they didn't pay, you know, our health and welfare and pension. And they, they, they got a plan because they didn't pay it for the central states. And also for the other guys, I think um, the Redway guys and those guys out west, it's it's expiring. I think uh, I think don't quote me. It's expiring sometime at the end of this month, and it still hasn't been paid. So they knew what was at stake and what was at hand, you know. And Sean O'Brien, you know, bought us some more time by you know getting with them, averting the strike, giving us thirty more days. Because think about it. Even if they got that injunction injunction last week, Friday, we would have went back to work Monday without health care, you know, okay. but the Teamster made the Teamsters made that happen. Sean O'Brien, you know, John Murphy, they made that happen for us and give us, you know, health care for another 30 days until they they get this all this, you know, crap figured out. So I, got you. I, I, I will never blame the Teamsters. This is solely on the company. You know, and, and, and they don't they don't really obviously they don't really care about the workers that much. They just care about implementing one yellow and one yellow is not bad, but make it whole for a lot of the drivers. That, that, that's it. You know, no, I appreciate that. No, thank you for being on the show. And then I was going to ask you a personal question right now, Eddie, you yeah. know, because I'm here to protect drivers. You know, um, how do you feel like about, you know, because I could block your face out and I could actually block out uh your, I could deepen your voice. I could lighten your voice. I could yeah. say, you know, or, or do you feel like, uh, you know, this is the truth that you want to tell? Because the last thing I want to do is, I would hate for Yellow to be like, Eddie, we saw you on this Mother Trucker's <laughs> channel. You know what I mean? So at the end of it, I mean, I want to protect you too. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, how? What do you want to do? Let me know because I, you know, I want to protect you. I don't want, I don't want you getting a phone call. The bottom line is, listen, this is America. We have freedom of speech, freedom of press, and I'm not, I, I don't know, I don't have any in, deep inside trader information. I'm a driver. I'm just letting you know what's going on with the company. And, you know, it's all from, it's all from my point of view, what I'm seeing. I have no insider information. It's just what I'm seeing. And the memos that, I, that have been made public, you know, I, I'm just re reiterating that information to you and giving you some clarity. That's it, my brother. That's it. So hey, you don't that, have to block out my that. face, change my voice, nothing. You know, I'm the steward of my terminal, and this is how I am. You know, when we have meetings, I'm very outspoken. 
you know, I, I take it to my terminal manager and, you know, I stand up for the workers' rights and that's it. My rights, the workers' rights and just try to make sure they honor the contractual, you know, agreement. And I want to make one more thing clear. Um, last week they released all those emails basically showing, or let me back it up a little bit. Initially they said there were no communication from the union and the company. And I just want to point out how Daryl Hawkins and the company, they're just blatant liars and they try to mislead, you know, drivers. If there's no communication from union to the company, then why are they going to show emails days later, the top brass and the top brass, Daryl Hawkins and Sean O'Brien emailing back and forth. And, you know, Daryl Hawkins, he said, hey, we'll take this eleven dollar which is compared to ABF and Sean O'Brien responded the same day and say, Hey, listen, um, are you sincere? I'm just summarizing right now, but are you sincere? And, you know, they had back and forth email and even in one email, Sean O'Brien wanted to clarify because it seemed like Daryl Hawkins didn't get it or understood when he said, Hey, I want that same deal. And they threw out that $11 and all Sean O'Brien was really trying to, break down is a fine print my brother because if you're buying a car you want to know what's in the fine print because that fine print will come back and haunt you and that is what sean o'brien is there to do to go through the fine print and make sure us teamsters are not getting you know screwed and one thing i want to point out with the memo from yesterday i don't know if you read it where it said that raise we we were already scheduled to get a raise october 1st coming up mm. that eleven dollars that, that raise would also be in that $11. So that shows you we really wouldn't be getting eleven a true $11 because that raise we, we already scheduled to get October 1st is from our prior or our current contract. Uh, I see, because I got a lot of emails that say, Alex, I think you got this wrong. It really ain't $11. It's not. And I was trying to figure it out. And so, I, you know, I appreciate you, you know, letting me know. It's, it's, it's one of those things where... Now, here's one thing that I'm seeing a lot in the comments, right? And tell me, you probably feel this too, right? And I'm not trying to bait you to say nothing. Just yeah. tell me if you, you've you heard this, right? That Yellow doesn't want to mess with the unions no more. So they're trying to do what they can to kind of kind of tank it per se. And then that way they could just hire non-union drivers. That's what's been going around a lot. I don't know if you heard any he say, she say about that, but are you hearing a lot of noise like that too? I have heard that, but it's, it's, it's a bit difficult. As I, I think I stated to you via text, I said, hey, right now, um, based on their actions, I'm just looking at all the plays coming up. Yeah. They could be downsizing in a sense. And, and, and they could file chapter 11. Chapter 11 will allow them to restructure and somewhat, you know, go around, you know, the contractual rights of, you know, the current union employees and they could restructure, push through one yellow, you know, close some terminals, sell them off and look good for their investors. And so it's a, it's a, it's a lot of different ways going forward. And I'm just looking at all the different plays. I'm not getting too giddy headed and scared, you know, I, to somewhat I am scared, but listen. I'm looking at it realistically, play by play, and that's what I think they're going to do right now. They're 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 getting rid of some of the guys, getting getting rid of the top heavy, and and, and uh, looking good for their investors, closing down some terminals, which they already scheduled, as we said earlier, to close those terminals down, and they could file that, you know, chapter eleven, and mm. uh, restructure, and boom, there you go, one yellow. I tell you, man, you know, um, the last question, you know, I have for you is, you know, a lot of times, you know, when this is your career, you kind of have to think of a plan B, you right. know, are other LTL companies, I don't know if you could say this or not, but are other LTL companies, I'm seeing articles about like Saya or, you know, uh, uh, even like uh, Covenant said they, they, they want to come in and, you know, hire some of y'all and this and that and start like an LTL department, even though they don't really have one. I mean, I might be quoting that wrong, but I read an article about that. But what I'm getting at is, are other LTO companies kind of, 
kind of being a recruiter a little bit and saying, hey, guys, Old Dominion, Estes, you know, Estes over here, you know, we, we would take you guys, you know what I mean? Is, is any company like that? Are, are you guys worried about that? Or Because I feel like with your experience, if you got a great track record, tomorrow you could find a job, Eddie. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I feel about you. You know what I mean? Well, what I could say is, I just got off the phone with a senior driver. He spoke to a partner, another driver up in, uh, um, I, I think it's uh, somewhere in Alabama. And he went into a SIA terminal, and he, and the terminal manager at SIA told him, hey, I got an email from corporate. They don't want me to hire any yellow freight drivers. And the reason for that is SIA is not union. And a lot of people don't know. Saya is actually uh, what would you say? It was. It, it's actually a sub. It used to be a subsidiary. You know, it used to be a company that was sold off by Yellow back in mm. the day. You know, a lot of people don't know that, but Ooh. they don't want to touch union employees because if we go in and they hire us, they're they're worried we're gonna you know try to basically change the tide and they they'll become unionized and then it becomes a bit you know. I got you. I got you. But so you guys might have to be looking at like LTLs that are yeah T fours ABF for the guys. You know you have Teamster LTL companies. I think Standard up north. You have a lot of other um, LTL um, Teamster companies that are up north and Midwest all over that will take drivers, but definitely not um, Old Dominion. I can tell you that much. But if they do. But if they do, no problem. You know, listen, take the guys. The guys are hardworking guys at the end of the day. You have a lot, you have a lot of dedicated, hardworking, whether, you know, they're teamsters and they're union, but they're hardworking guys. A lot of guys, they love their job, love showing up, love treating the customers right and getting the job done. You know, and, and I, and I want to really point out even at my terminal this week, um, when we came back Monday, there are a lot of customers reaching out to myself and other drivers and saying, Hey, um, we have freight, come get the freight. Even today I had, um, you know, a few of my customers, uh, texting me and say, Hey, we got X amount of pallets. Are you guys coming? And it's tough because we came back with the intention Monday of, okay, let's hit, let's hit the streets, you know, get this freight and just crush it and let, you know, Sean O'Brien do what he has to do. Cause he'll, he'll get us the best deal possible. And then, boom, Tuesday, midday, management is going to hit you up and say, hey, don't pick up the freight. But listen, huh, we already start picking up freight because when I went out Tuesday, I actually went out with an empty trailer just to pick up freight. So mm. I, was, I, was, I, I went out and I came back to the terminal full from, from the front to the back, 100 percent full. So, you know, customers are, are, are ready to ship with us, you know, because we've built such a relationship with our customers. And they want to ship with us because we take care of them. Oh, I appreciate you, man. You know, hey, honestly, you know, I, I'm praying for all y'all. And, hey, thank you for being just brave enough to be on the show. You know, I, I wish I could tell you only my mama watches this show. But, you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's one of those things. I just want to get the right information. But also, at the end of the day, this show's not about getting truck drivers fired because that's what I hate about news media. They'll do whatever it takes to get the info. And they don't care what happens to the people. Yeah. And, you know, I want I just want you to be good and your family to be good and everybody to be good. So at the end of this, hey, this is the actual update of what's going on, at least in the Florida terminals. We could state that. Correct. And and, you know, and so hopefully I can have you back on again. Uh, you know, shoot me a text if anything changes if, and, you know, and I'll uh, I will Monday, update the world. Monday we'll know. We'll, 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 we'll sort of have more of a, you know, understanding of the direction the yellow freight is going to go. And Monday, I could give you an update and, and let you know what, where, we're, what, what, you know, at what avenue they're going to take. You know, more than likely, it's going to be much clearer. What I could tell you, though, 100% is that um, if you go to any broker or um, any, any third party that books with yellow, um, you could actually put in pickups. We actually have pickups in the system for schedule for next week, Monday. So, you know, that that's there. I don't know if that makes a difference or it's a glitch or what, but, you know, we were told that, hey, at my terminal that we are, you know,
going back to business as usual. It was ba It's going to be back to business Monday. I don't know if it's back to business as far as the freight that's in the pipeline that's coming down that we're just going to deliver and work off and come back and come back without picking up. Or we're going to deliver that freight and pick up as well. So, you know, we'll see because my customer said, hey, hey, Eddie, I noticed I could put in um, pickups for next week. So maybe they have a plan. Maybe you guys are going to be back on next week because I didn't know that she she uh, she notified me um, probably like two hours ago. Say, hey, you know, we could put in pickups. So I said, OK, maybe that's what it is. Maybe there's a bigger plan, man. So let's just I'm uh, hoping for the bigger plan, bro. Like, exactly. you know, I. You know, people are like crazy to just it's different when you don't work there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's different when it's like it, it's the crowd favorite thing to be like, oh, this is what's happening. And why y'all just dip in? You see the signs. I mean, this this is this is your livelihood right here. So I'm hoping it pushes through for you. I know a lot of terminals shut down, but like you told me, they were scheduled to shut down already. So, I mean, people are just connecting the wrong dots too. you know, it happens like that. Correct. Correct. So, you know, um, I hope you could have probably somebody on from, you know, the, 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 the right away out west there and they could really connect the dots a little bit more. And that will really help everyone to have an understanding. But there's a lot of speculation, a lot of rumors and a lot of people that just have no knowledge of really what's going on and spreading a lot of stuff. And, you know, that goes like wildfire, man. And you have some drivers, too, that are young driver. I noticed one guy. He was I see on, them. yeah, he was on um another platform. He came on another platform with a Miami driver, senior guy. I know that I, I don't know him personally, Dwayne from Miami, but that guy's yeah. passionate, you know. And they both came on there. And that other guy, he was just uninformed. He has no knowledge really about the inner workings. He's just been here two years, acts as if he knows what's going on. He doesn't, you know. So yeah. when you have guys come on like that, and they they spread the wrong message about the union about other workers it, it just gives us it just gives us you know us as workers and teamsters just makes us look bad and that's not that's not good you know that's not good I at all hear you. no i hear you no i know i know exactly we don't got call it no names but it's a uh, it's one of those things where people are feeling pretty strongly about some of the comments and yeah you know hey at the end of it eddie man i i sure do wish you the best Thank uh, you. i'm hoping for some good news man everybody you know, everybody's always looking for my channel for some random stuff. I'm looking for some good news. So hopefully exactly. we get something good. And then on Monday, just let me know what's going on. And, hey, I might be the first person there in the morning. Right at, right, right now on the property line, man, I'm going to be standing right there like, yo. Yeah, yeah, you, right. you were right there, man. I saw you and I said, because actually you weren't the only one there. They had another gentleman there in a Tesla parked up at front. He was pretty closer. And he was just trying to get some information. But, you know. Uh, I didn't have any information to give him. You know, you 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 are just a journalist. He it seems like he wanted to get some type of financial information or whatever. I don't have that to give him, but I could I yeah. can tell you the truth of what's going on and my terminal and what I've heard firsthand. You know, what's going on around. Yeah, so yeah I don't play that stuff, Eddie. Man, people be trying to do some crazy stuff, man. All I, I want you know. is I just want truck drivers to know the truth so that we don't spread lies. And then, Definitely. yeah, we're praying for you, man. But, yeah, no, I thank you so much for being on the thanks show. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. You know, and, uh, yeah, thanks for being brave enough to be on, you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm here to protect you, bro. But, hey, if you feel good about it, then I feel good about it. I'm good, man. I'm good. 100%. 100%. Yes. This, is, hey. this is America, man. We have freedom of press, freedom of speech. So, hey, again, I don't have any insider, inf insider trader information or anything like that. But I can tell you the truth. What's going on in my terminal? And, you know, what I've heard from my terminal manager and so on and so forth. And that's it. And and, and what I've gotten from um, business agent David Schillinger or, you know, top brass, Sean O'Brien, John Murphy. That's all I could give you, my friend. Yes, sir. And that's all we need. So, hey, I appreciate you so much. I'll talk to you later, brother. Have a good one, man. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Yes, sir. Bye.